call the Public Safety <laughs> Criminal Justice Committee to order, 10 o'clock on June 28, 2019. We have a quorum. Uh, first order of business is to approve minutes of prior meeting. Thank you, Supervisor Garrity on the first, second by Supervisor Simpson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. First up today is Public Defender. Marcy, you have the floor. Good morning. I think these are easy. Um, I have had number, position number five open, and I would like to move Mary Kate Leahy, who is my current number seven, into number five. And so that's my request to fill on number five. I will go through all three, and then maybe you'll vote on all three at once. Yes. Is that okay? Thank you. Um, I have number six. Um, I have a vacancy. Erin Bates is, is uh, leaving effective today at 5 o'clock. She's going to Albany County Public Defender's Office, so I will have an opening there. So I would like to move my number 8 into number 5. And then um, the number 8 is the guy I hired last week, and he's come back. Two weeks in, he's, he's completing his second week, and he's coming back. It's good. Um, his name is Sean Dehaney, and he's doing really well, and I'm really happy. So I'd like to move him into number 6, which is still, he's moving from one grant-funded position into another grant-funded position. And then the last one is a notice to fill vacancy number 7, because if you allow me to move Mary Kate Leahy from number 7 to number 5, I will have number 7 open and I am discussing hiring somebody for that position potentially who has graduated from law school and has been admitted. Um, in addition, for the number eight position that will become open, I have somebody from Chestertown who is past the bar and is waiting admission, and I would love to hire that person, but I will come back to you next month with that because I have to move number eight into number six before I can make the request to fill number eight. It's a lot of numbers. Okay. And that's it. Okay, moved by Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. One, two, and three. One action items one, two, and three. Right. Correct. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Any further discussion on these? Just, just a point of information in terms of the, sorry, the attorney grid that we set up earlier in the year. This is, uh, it, it, Files, I guess. It, will keep, it will keep everybody in a position where they're not going to be in excess of the attorney right. grid. And there is no additional funds being uh, paid by the county for these positions. It's, it's funds that are already in existence now, no additional money going into them. Uh, and, and for clarification, the numbers on your positions are a bit of a hierarchy in your office, correct? But the hierarchy is, doesn't quite make sense because when we got number six, it was a grant position, the county gave us number seven, and then grant position is number eight. So the numbers are not as important as their bodies, their filling bodies. Okay. Okay? Good. Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I originally said request for executive session. I don't need that. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. And we're done. All Have right. A wonderful weekend, everyone. You too. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Go ahead, for <coughs> Next up is District Attorney. Jason, you, you have the floor. Um, if Marcy's was easy, mine might be easier because we've got one position. Uh, we have a part time uh, position that was provisionally filled. Uh, we went through the examination process and we now would like to uh, permanently fill that part-time position. I'll move it. Okay, moved by Supervisor Garrity, second by Supervisor Sokol. Any further discussion on this? I take it that they passed the exam that came no in and No further discussion. <laughs> What's that? No further discussion. Yeah, sir. well, just for clarification here. <laughs> it's private. Uh, what I can say is that we had to hire from, there was people that hit the list we interviewed off the list and made this hire off of the list. Okay. Good. Thank you. Civil services. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next up is uh, Sheriff. Sean, you have the floor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Up to the action agenda, we have item A which is to enter into a new contract with Roselle Industries to perform concrete repairs over at the Sheriff's Office Complex. Okay. Motion to bring it to the floor. Supervisor Driscoll. Second by... Is there a second? Second by Supervisor Merlino. Go ahead, Sean. Item uh, B... There, well, there... Um, so on this, this all went out to 
you got your quotes. So and here's, here's the history of what we did. We reached out to three different vendors to do uh, a lot of different concrete repairs, uh, to the foundation, to the floors. Uh, after 15 years, a lot of it's breaking down, especially to the salt. Apparently, pizza. Uh, we had three vendors come in, look at it. Only two vendors gave us prices. The third vendor would not give us a quote. Uh, the other vendor that gave us a quote was Mac Industries, which is on Corinth Road in Queensbury. Uh, they gave us two different options. Um, I sent a copy of that to the county administrator. Option A was 24000 and change, and option B was 26000 and change. We went with uh, Roselle because they would provide us with the lowest quote. Good. Right. Any, any questions on number A? Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. B or B through G. B C D E F are request to enter into new contracts with those respective school districts for school resource officer positions. Uh, the amount that we're contracting for has increased uh, to cover the cost of our liability insurance and to cover the cost of the fringe benefits. Uh, in addition to what you see as the amounts on there, uh, the <coughs> contacts, contracts will also have a provision if we have to buy any equipment for these officers, it'll be passed along to the, uh, to the school district as well. Okay. Who would like to bring those five items to the floor? Supervisor Sokol, second by Supervisor Garrity. And we have two different school years. These are two different budget years. One is the school year, one is our fiscal year. How these are gauged towards? These are contracts which will begin uh, September of this year when the new school year starts. Okay. And carry over to June of next year. Okay. Yep. Good. Any other questions? Yes, Supervisor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, John. Um, I know that you guys have been uh, in dialogue with uh, the school districts uh, throughout the year, but at the end of the school year, I mean, have you uh, sat down with them and, and kind of you know, talked about the, the first year experience and maybe areas that you might want to, uh, you know, go in maybe a different direction or modify some of the uh, policies. So about a month and a half ago, uh, Sheriff York and myself reached out to all the superintendents for the five school districts that we contract for. Uh, there was a resounding theme that was coming from the superintendents that we've become part of their uh, norm, having the officers there. Uh, a couple of the districts said they couldn't imagine us not being there if we've been there for almost a year. Uh, the feedback we've got from staff, students, parents has been tremendous. Uh, there's really been no pushback from it, and uh, we anticipate this fall that we'll be contracting with uh, Warrensburg, which will be a new <coughs> district coming on board. Um, I give a great deal of latitude to each school district to allow them that what might work well in Queensbury might not necessarily be just what they want to do in Bolton. So we've given the superintendents and the principals some latitude and um, what they want them to be involved in. We did draw a line, and it's important to note that none of the school districts, we are involved with the disciplinary process because if we become a disciplinarian within a school, then we're starting to build a wall back up between us and the, the students. And that's not why we're there. We're there to build a rapport and build relationships of trust. Congratulations, Thank you. Any other questions? Just, just right. to technically, is there any difference in the contract language between all these districts uh, or, or the way that the payments work, anything like that? They're all going to be lump sum up front. North Warren is a bit of an anomaly because we have two officers sharing one, full, one position up there. Okay. So because um, there's hours built in there for training and you're paying liability insurance for two officers instead of one, that's why their amounts a little bit more. Okay, thanks. Well, then I'll call the question. All those in favor on B, C, D, E, and F, say aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Item G, request a resolution for a budget amendment to the county budget for the Lake George Central School District. We did not have a school resource officer in the elementary school until about the end of January this year. And this is to amend the budget to reflect those revenues coming in. Okay, that's 15000 yep. Brought to the floor by Supervisor Sokol, second by Supervisor Simpson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. An item which didn't make it onto the agenda, 
as we have a notice of intent to fill a vacant position. Uh, Officer Dan Hapshe uh, <clears throat> is uh, leaving our agency effective July 18th, and this is just to backfill his position as a patrol officer. Okay. Moved by Supervisor Garrity, second by Supervisor Simpson to backfill a vacant position. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'd like the committee to be aware that uh, we're in a process of getting quotes for health care for the correctional facility. Uh, I believe we did this last year. I think we, we met with three different companies. Um, we're meeting with at least three different companies right now and to make sure that we're getting the best value out there for the county. Um, we've already met with two of them, and I think the other ones are going to be coming back soon with some pricing as well. And this covers who? It's the... Uh, medical care to the uh, inmate population. For the inmates, yes. And the other thing that's important to realize, about a year ago, our inmate population was uh, seeing all-time highs. We were up in the 170s. Uh, I think we got nearly 180 at some point in time, to the point where we had to have boarders leave the facility to make room for our own. Our population has uh, gone down drastically. I think we were, as of two days ago, we were about 103 inmates in custody. So. <clears throat> We anticipate once we get to January when the bail reform kicks in that a lot of these unsentenced people that are currently incarcerated will no longer be incarcerated. So our jail population is going to, again, dra drastically decrease. I saw a projection for our neighbors in Washington County and they projected that they'd have an incarcerated, pro incarcerated population of somewhere between 25 and 35 after this bail reform kicks in. And their facility is actually larger than ours. And how will that affect your staffing and your budget? Well, I think the uh, State Commission of Correction is going to have to come in and look at, you know, are there sections of the jail that we can close down, a pod or something. Supervisor Garrity? Yeah, we had a conversation about that yesterday in Inner County. It's going to affect, they were talking about that. So far, they haven't allowed any of the uh, facilities to reduce their staffing. Right. Not yet, but uh, they were talking about that. I think it's something the state's going to have to look at because it's not unique to Warren County. It's going to happen across the state. How are the, uh, the, the mental health program? Has that been? So um, <coughs> as of I think it was January, February this year, AA started coming back into the facility. Originally it was a struggle getting females to come in and be peer counselors. Yeah. Uh, we now have males and females coming in, and about 25% of our population is attending these meetings voluntarily. Uh, the ABLE program, where they meet with the reentry coordinators, that has really ramped up in the last month, uh, where a lot of people are taking advantage of those services and getting uh, mental health care set up before they get released, uh, substance abuse treatment set up before they get released. In cases where they need housing, they help them get a housing. Uh, I just met with um, Rob York from the Warren Washington Association of Mental Health last Friday and we're contracting with a company out of Albany to come in and do the substance abuse treatment within the facility and that's a $60,000 grant. Um, as we foresee that moving forward it's going to be basically a three-quarter position where uh, professional counselors coming into the facility and providing those services to the incarcerated population. Well thank you for coordinating all that and keep us posted on, on the success of it. Hopefully it has good outcomes. Any, anything else to come before the... Nope, the, only, uh, the other thing under topics for discussion, uh, we just recently promoted a correction sergeant as of yesterday, and we have uh, either three or four, it was four last week when I put this together, uh, vacant positions, but they're actively filling them in corrections. to adjourn. So moved by Supervisor Garrity, second by Supervisor Simpson. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned.